Now I would assume that the vast majority of you that clicked on this video, looking at the title, said this is kind of ridiculous. Why is this even a question? Would I rather be Dean Malenko or The Rock? If I was a wrestler, who would I rather be? You would think that the answer is completely effing obvious. You would think that everybody would take a look at the two situations and say, one was a dude. The other is one of the biggest stars of all time. One made some money in wrestling over the years, not to di totally discredit him. The other one made millions upon millions of dollars and parlayed that success in professional wrestling, excuse me, sports entertainment to go on to Hollywood to become one of the most successful movie stars around today. You would think that the answer would be obvious to everyone. It certainly is for most of you, I would hope. You'd rather be The Rock. Look, you could be a fan of Dean Malenko's work. You could be a fan of his form of wrestling. But come on. Could you imagine being a kid and looking at The Rock and saying, I want to be like Dean Malenko. The great value version of Chris Benoit? Really? Exactly. Think about how ridiculous that would be. And you're probably thinking, well, this is kind of a ridiculous premise and a ridiculous conversation to even be having. It feels that way that it should be, but it's not a ridiculous conversation anymore. Because I am fully convinced with many the wrestling fans that are still left, still around, that still watch professional wrestling, that that question is something they would actually debate in their own minds. And there's a sizable segment of the overall wrestling fan base that would choose to be Dean Malenko instead of The Rock. You could blame Uncle Dave for this. He certainly, certainly plays a role. But he is not alone. He is not exclusive in the blame here. But something really ridiculous has happened over the years when it comes to professional wrestling. The de-emphasis of star power, the de-emphasis on charisma, mic skills, personalities, characters. You know those things that actually make the most money. So that way people can circle jerk themselves off to a bunch of moves and spots in a damn match. That's one thing if fans say, I'd rather be Dean Malenko than The Rock. Because fans are stupid. Fans say dumb things. Fans look from their perspective and their perspective alone, which is their right to do. No matter how ridiculous that viewpoint may be. But I guarantee you, if I got outside of the bubble of my own followers on Twitter or my own subscribers here and asked a lot of wrestling fans, especially those that watch AEW, who they would rather be, the results would be eye-opening, and I promise you, The Rock wouldn't be the runaway winner or the runaway choice, which leads you to ask, what in the F is going on here? Why would you want to just be a dude that had no character, no personality, no charisma, no mic skills, was always going to be a middle-of-the-card guy, a lower-end-of-the-card guy, as opposed to being one of the biggest stars in the history of the professional wrestling business? It's like we went from this place where you watched wrestling to watch these larger-than-life personalities and characters and those people that could help you escape reality to now we want to live vicariously through the wrestlers on the screen to the point that we think we're cosplaying wrestlers and we could be like them because they look just like you, act just like you, have a personality of fucking concrete like most of you do, and that's why you like them. You used to like the wrestlers that were different from you. The wrestlers that had cool factor. You got so many damn Dean Malenkos out there now. How could any of them be cool? If you had one Dean Malenko, he could be cool to a certain level. Absolutely. Because he could be different. He could be unique. 
But professional wrestling now is littered with these guys, and AEW most certainly damn is. Why the fuck would you want to be like that? Why would you want to be like the guy that made far less money? And to the whole thing of, well, you know, money isn't everything. It's about the love of it. And some guys just have the love of it. All right. That's dumb on a variety of different levels. Let's look at other sports. NFL, MLB, NBA, doesn't matter. All these athletes will sit there and say, well, I play it, the game for free. I played for the love of the game. Bullshit! They play the game because they want to make money. It's their best opportunity to make as much money as they can, and they're going to do it. If they truly love the game as much as they claim to where they would pay lay it for free, a lot of them would play for league minimum salaries. Why don't they? Of course they fucking don't, because it's not about the love of the game. Sure, it's nice if your profession and your passions align. But that is not a requirement. Look, I have a decent passion about my real world job. But if I got paid three times as much to do a job that I actually hated, guess what? I'd go use some of that money that I made to plug into other vices that would help fill the gap for my passions not being filled with my work. All that love of the business shit is nice, but that doesn't pay the rent or mortgage. That doesn't pay the car note. That's dumb. Especially when you think about professional wrestling. The name of the game is to make money, just like with the major sports leagues in this country. You've got but a certain window, a certain period of time. You could always be one bump away from it being all over. And unlike some of these other sports leagues in wrestling, you don't have some type of pension like these other leagues have. You don't even have a 401k plan. You don't have any type of disability benefits in the long term. You don't have any retirement health care benefits being provided by these organizations like you do with these other sports leagues. So you have to go in and get in where you can fit in and get as much damn money as you can while you can. Oh, they're getting paid okay. Fine. But why would you want to settle for being paid okay? Especially when you know, for all intents and purposes, you're not going to be able to do this until you're 60 or 65 years old. Those guys are the far, far, far exception to the rule. But I get wrestling fans being kind of dense about this. Because they're not looking at it from a business standpoint in a lot of cases. And nor do they necessarily have to. That's not their obligation. That's not their responsibility. That's not necessarily what the perspective should be. But for professional wrestlers? Like I saw the shit Darby Allen said today. It was earlier today I saw it. So if it was said before, forgive me. He's talking about how he doesn't care about the world title. He wants to go after the TNT title and make that. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? If you're in any business, why in the hell would you settle for being the absolute, anything less than the absolute best of what you could be? That makes absolutely no goddamn sense. I want to be a mid-carter. I don't want to work hard and get to the top. I don't have that passion or fire. I just want to beat off to my matches and pop Meltzer. Well, guess who you are then? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. And we have enough other asshats just like <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler that we don't need any more of them. How ridiculous for wrestlers to be sitting there and talking about how I don't want to get to the top. I'm okay with this, and I want to make this matter. No, ding dong, dumb dicks. The name of the game is business. Professional wrestling is a business. It is a business where it is incumbent upon you to draw as much money as you can so you can make as much goddamn money as you can. We need a little less complacency and mediocrity, a little more ambition and damn hunger not to go out there and just pop the fucking internet with your damn five star matches but to go out there and try to grow your audience and make as much damn money as possible. And if you think that a guy like Darby Allen is going to make anywhere near as much money as the, at that spot, at that level, as guys like CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Chris Jericho, give me a fucking break. John Moxley. Those guys you all know are making infinitely more money than him. They got theirs. And they should have. Get yours while you fucking can. 
Why in the hell would you want to settle for less? Well, they treat the TV title like a big deal. It's not the world title, you dipshits. It's those talents that either hold the world title, are going after the world title, or at a level commensurate with the world title that make the most money. It's the way it always has been, it's the way it always will be. Being the mid-card TV champion ain't the fucking jam. It's a nice stepping stone. It's a way to build your brand, to build your credibility, to build your following, to build your skills. But that in no way, shape, or form should be the ultimate stop. If you get into professional wrestling and your goal is not to be the absolute best that you could possibly be and get as high up the fucking card as you possibly can, then you are in the wrong goddamn business and you should have never been broken in to begin with. And that is the problem with professional wrestling today. Too many of these guys and gals satisfied to make a little bit of money, have a little bit of adulation from people that they don't fucking know and they really don't like, Pop Meltzer and these other internet journalist nerds, and get all these warm feelings about how good their matches are, play their video games, and then that's fucking it. Ain't nothing wrong with playing video games, but why not try to make yourself fucking seven figures and be snorting coke off a of stripper's ass cracks while you're playing damn Grand Theft Auto or some shit or Halo or whatever the fuck the kids play nowadays. Yes, I'm old. Give me a break here. I think if you asked a lot of the wrestlers in the business today, publicly they might say they'd rather be The Rock because they know they would get shit on by people like me, justifiably so. But a lot of them deep down will look at a Dean Malenko as more of an inspiration or more of a role model or more of somebody that they would like to be and they would personally, deep, deep down in the cackles of their heart and soul, rather be a damn Dean Malenko than The Rock. Does anybody else see the fucking problem with this picture? Like if you said, hey, I'd rather be Bret Hart than The Rock. That's still insane to me. But at least you're starting to get in the right hemisphere. Shawn Michaels, same thing. Fucking ridiculous, but compared to like a Dean Malenko. But we've jumped the shark so much that you legitimately will have fans say they would rather watch a Dean Malenko than The Rock. They would rather see a Dean Malenko than The Rock. They would rather be a Dean Malenko than The Rock. They'd be content with being in their own little bubble, making just a little bit of money, instead of being a transcendent all-time talent in the business. That's a representation of a lot of the fans of professional wrestling today and is a lot, representation, unfortunately, of a lot of the wrestlers in the business today. And that's why shit's in the shape that it's in. And that's sad. The whole premise of this video should have me laugh at. Some of you will anyways, and have at it. Like, the premise is ridiculous. The premise is ludicrous. Nobody in their right fucking mind should be thinking that, debating that question, and choosing Dean Malenko. But the problem is, is there's fans, there's fucking probably wrestling media, and there certainly are wrestlers now, that would choose Dean Malenko. No disrespect to Dean, but come the fuck on!